keep it keep it keep it uh my name is father i am a stand up comedian because so i become a bollywood superstar land and goes over <laughs> My name is Arthur. Yes, it's one of the most rhymeable words in the Hindi language. <laughs> Everybody has one word like Arthur, Arthur, Arthur. What really confuses me is father, which is something like if I had to draw a Venn diagram of all the names that people come up with, in the center would be father, and that like क्या बना दिया हमने? They would be so proud. I had a good childhood. Uh, my uh, parents were really great to me because uh, at seven they got me my first keyboard. Uh, 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 Casio. I never got a bat. Like I could never go down and tell my friends, "My bat leke ghar ja raha." I never got to do that. <laughs> and uh, it was tough because I didn't appreciate what music was like a formal training because I come from a family of musicians, and uh, I these these guys are really hardworking musicians. who never got to train at music they made their entire lives uh, earnings and their living of music but they never got to train so they decided to train all of us and uh, just like parents na khud ka frustration apne bachcho pe and uh, and i i i now like uh, after it took me almost a decade to realize you know when you reach your teens i started when i was 7 and when i reached my teens when that need to be unique and different arises inside you just like pimples <laughs> that's when i realized oh i already was that's when everybody is trying to find themselves i already had something that truly set me apart from the crowd so to say and uh, one fine day i decided to quit at 18 i decided to start acting i i thought i wasn't good enough i started doubting the ability uh, I I had a formal training in music so I failed one exam I failed one exam and it was when I was giving my 12th board science plus my grandfather in the hospital and I was studying on the hospital steps and I happened to fail in one of the music exams and I just quit I just lost interest because I failed and it kind of affected me for a good 5 6 years where I didn't play an instrument or i didn't bother with it and uh, i started acting i started finding something else entirely i found another excuse to be on stage i loved it i'm not saying i didn't uh, but every time i would find a piano or like a guitar i would just i would kind of play it and uh, at 24 25 it kind of came back to me and i realized oh wow people truly find this appealing people get attracted to this people uh, i learned the guitar to impress a girl let's just clarify that i learned it to impress a girl and have you has <laughs> and uh, that's where i started music again because oh this is i i have no game i can't i'm not cool with the uh, like sophisticated pickup lines i'm not doing anything that's extraordinary uh, this possibly makes me cooler than the average indian male <laughs> i like that you're assuming i'm not good <laughs> I'm upper class, in, like I'm upper uh, upper average. I don't know. It's like the upper middle class of average Indian male. Like that's what the guitar gives me. <laughs> This is a smaller guitar because it's easier to travel. It has nothing to do with. It is a smaller guitar, but it's just as powerful. <laughs> it's not the size. It's how you play with it. <laughs> So um I have a presentation that I've kind of made um, I worked really hard on it uh, two hours back <laughs> Oh there we go Hi
So I'm going to be going through some of my songs with you, and uh, I'm just we're going to go through the lyrics. And a question that I get asked the most is, how do you kind of blend comedy with music? And uh, so, as opposed to telling you, like your, I spoke to a bunch of friends of mine who are engineers, who've come, uh, who've graduated from WITS, from IIT, bunch of like the best institutions in the country, and. Uh, one question they have is, trust me, all the engineering students are looking to you to just say, there is something beyond engineering you can do with your life. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to play some of my songs, and we're going to go through the lyrics, and we're going to have a mic. Uh, you guys can ask me questions after every song about how I kind of, we're going to actually break down why why it worked, why the comedy kind of worked, but I have not done it, uh, it'll be good for us to actually sit down and analyze why a particular song is funny or not funny, or let's just get into it. <laughs> That's what my girlfriend says most of the time. <laughs> so, uh, this song is about a girl, because I feel there aren't enough songs about that. <laughs> we all have that one girl who could have been, who could have. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's just like, ho sakta tha, you know, in my case, she was, you know, that perfect girl, the blend of the girl next door and uh, the hot girl washing your car. <laughs> Not the watchman, the <laughs> Hollywood wala. The, nahi, don't, na, na everybody's imagining some weird guy in a brown <laughs> sponge. Ke don't ruin my fantasy, guys. <laughs> So, uh, this song is about that one girl, you know, could have... Uh, here we go. <laughs> this is one song that I wrote When I didn't have someone to book Facebook <laughs> Every time that she would walk by The uncle next door would get a stroke <laughs> Shut up, uncle <laughs> She met me right after she broke up I was ready to be her rebound back up She said a bit. She called me Pai. Back to 
My love for her is like modern art. It's all over the cameras. Cause she called me Bhaiya. She called me Bhaiya, 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 Vidaiya. I wanted her to toss my routine on. <laughs> I want to brush her hair behind her gun. <laughs> But why did you force me to do your kanya Thank you. So uh, this song came from, uh, you know, you heard of the 4 a.m. miracle. I had a side note that was written in a notebook somewhere in my joke book in the corner, like what if a girl, you know, friend zones you. And one day at four in the morning it was, how about I take it to the extreme? How about she? And that's where the idea kind of came in. And in about one and a half to two hours, I had almost all the final lyrics of the song. And uh, there we go. Uh, so, these are the lyrics. The watchman plays a very important part of my lyrics. I know, for this particular song, I don't know why. Uh, uh, maybe I was having a bad day with him that day. Diwali Chandrithi was asking me for bakshish too much, so I decided to crucify him in a song. So, I think that's what happened. And uh, this girl is not real. This one particular girl, she's an amalgamation of all the hatred all my friends had towards all the other girlfriends who've kind of friendzoned them and got amalgamated into this horrific human being <laughs> that ends up in this song. So, um, uh, so there is an element of lies to the comedy and, uh, but then it is lies which is uh, a cumulative set of experiences from everyone. Like this is my friends and stuff like that and if I could make it funny, if I could actually add up, like uh, the product is greater than the sum of its parts. I think that's, that's the simplest way of putting it. Okay, so now we're going to go to another song. Uh, uh, so let's do something clean. So, sex. <laughs> It's tough as uh, Indian parents to talk to your children about sex. It's uh, one of those things that is a taboo in the society and people are really scared and uh, I really like commend parents who have that talk with their kids. And um, this song kind of encapsulates that conversation that I had with my dad because he used extensive props and metaphors. He used a pencil battery to explain sex to me. Yeah, I can't look at a battery anymore without thinking of this charge. <laughs> yes, an engineering college gets that joke. Thank you. For multiple charges, I don't know. <laughs> By the time we got down to homosexuality, things just got out of hand, okay? So. <laughs> This song is uh, me talking to my dad and learning about the birds and the bees and hippopotamus and batteries. <laughs> Here we go. Papa, Papa, tell me how was I born? And he said, Wait again, those batteries, I'll teach you how to turn a woman on. But Papa, batteries have a positive and negative end. Doesn't matter, son, as long as the woman bends. Oh. Dramatic pause for my father's ill-timed hot yoga joke. 
So I asked him what are gays. He told me go get two bar magnets. He stuck the opposite ends, but the same ends match, and they would not stick. That is how the world sees gays. He said it's stupid close-mindedness. So I asked him what are buys. Don't leave me halfway in this mess. He said that buys can swing both ways of this shit. Their passport is what you call dual citizenship. <laughs> So he sung loudly and said, Are you straight? Are you gay? Are you lesbian or bi? Are you straight? Are you gay? Are you lesbian or bi? My daddy was so cool about homosexuality. So stop calling them fruit, cause they don't grow on a homo tree. 377 says it's so unnatural, but I'll tell you what is really true. Unnatural. Twelve million gods are natural. Being shitting on the road are natural. Traffic jams, all the gate scams, kingfishers failing business plans. Not voting, then muttering. The poor are suffering while MPs are buffering. Porn unnatural. Dowdy for a girl, dowdy for a girl. Did it, did it, dowdy for a girl. Makes you want a hurricane. But we still keep asking, what are you? Stray, are you gay? Are you gay? Genders, but they didn't fit in my rhyme. Are you straight? Are you gay? Are you lesbian or bi? Like a Gujarati, straight che gay, lesbian che, kon che tu bi? Are you straight? Are you gay? Are you lesbian or bi? Like a Karni Sena. exact result by working on something else at that at that same pace and that this uh, but it didn't work out so uh, this song took about eight drafts to get right and those eight drafts included going on stage and crashing and burning and people not understanding the song not realizing what the song is about because I personally was confused I was trying to say too much with the song I had a friend who was gay and kind of had this conversation with me about how tough it was for him growing up and that is what I wanted to write and I was trying to be uh, uh, be like a decent, uh, a good objective human being where I make fun of this, I make fun of the people making fun of gay, like the homophobia, I make fun of uh, 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 gay, lesbian and the whole, like you know, I, I try to do that and you know that's when a friend of mine like sat me down and was like, okay, after a show which went the song did hit home, so obviously it hits you very hard. You're like, damn, it didn't work. Uh, you kind of uh, sit down and you're like, why, why, why? And that's when a friend of mine told me that, you know what, they are the heroes of your song. So treat it so. And it's, it's the subject matter in question and that really changed my perspective on how I'm writing a particular song or a particular piece of stand-up where uh, if I want to say something, I'm not a journalist, I don't need to have an objectified opinion, you know, which is odd because most journalists in this country don't know. And I, I, I just need to have an opinion. Who are my heroes in the song? And for this particular song, it was the LGBTQ community. 
and uh, so okay so that's how i kind of attacked the song and we ended up with this and uh, it was an up how do i make it personal so i decided to go with my dad talking about it because this is what actually kind of happened because i kind of remembered that this is how i was explained it was a bit of an over exaggeration in the song though but uh, it was very tough and awkward for my dad to explain that to me like this also exists and i'm sure everybody had that and that's where it kind of clicked and okay this is what my narrative like this song actually is kind of a storytelling format in a song like uh, like if bhaiya is uh, random instances it's like random electrons firing this is very specific as far as the storyline goes the next line doesn't make sense if you don't hear the previous line and uh, followed by the yeah i'm getting better at powerpoint as this presentation progresses <laughs> uh this was uh, this was the big change uh, where i kind of uh, twisted over and go oh, this is my very specific opinion like my father taught me the right opinion here uh to be open minded on this aspect which is again uh, what for me it represents like my dad influenced my decision to do and to see people or perceive people a certain way and uh, by the end it was just the 377 which was uh, it was supposed to be a really random set of things that i had very arbitrary things that are more relevant than 377 so uh, another friend of mine another comedian told me that why not make it very relevant things that are a problem in this country as opposed to this so that's where this kind of evolved and it took eight or nine drafts to get right and by the end you have me being jatjit singh or uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, the karni se na thing so right now like uh, on on the lyrics it's maharashtra i i change that depending on whatever is happening at that particular period of time when i wrote the song there was some random fights going on depending on like, i don't know uh, uh, i'm not going to name but marna nahi hai na engineer banna tum log aage ja ke so uh, it's just the thing with this country is something is always happening which is stupid as far as free speech or opinion is concerned this time it was karni sena so i just went forward with that okay so uh, my next song uh, is um, uh, really special it uh, kind of it's about my uh, any pet owners in the audience any animal lovers pet owners just give me a cheer like just yeah it's awesome to have a pet right you got them like right since they're a little kid you're taking care of them you feed them you tie get like you tie them on a leash and like take them out for a walk show them off to your friend and like like mera you can't do that with your girlfriend <laughs> they mind apparently but the, the toughest part is stopping them from eating their own shit <laughs> i've dated weird women <laughs> uh so this song is about my pet Uh, and he is no longer around and i really miss him uh so yeah all the girls go huh yeah, this song always gets me late <laughs> are shiny and very pink i like to stroke your beard from start to end it's the same in length as my ex girlfriends oh my god ramzan is round the corner it's a bit dramatic pardon me i can't help it i am islamic i am treating you nice and you are fed well but i'll chop off your head before you can yell ba <laughs> god your life is beautiful and end is tragic but i need my biryani my god demands it this is my duty and yours we cannot stop it there is no room for loss only profit this is my very special god sometimes i kiss him where you don't 30 days i've been starving for you while you feast on grass and in 
imported cashews, imported cashews from Saudi. I will chop everything in my vision. How do you think I got this circumcision? I could just issue a fatwa I just want to wrap you up in my grandma's burqa Don't scream or shout, that's my only bid We are sorted for next year, we have your kid <laughs> I tried to sell this song to Peter, they were like, Nenji. <laughs> so close-minded. <laughs> the problem uh, the, that we had while uh, kind of uh, right, like shooting the video for this song was uh, we were so scared that okay, we'll get a real goat and so we got all the animal rights and you know, got all the permissions. We had lawyers, I was like, okay, you're gonna release karenge, the problem, ho jayega. You know, we did all that. Uh, and uh, we got this really cute, black and white, wonderful goat and she was so like nice and first of all it was a she, like a guy in the who songs about a guy. Uh, but um, uh, she was a really pretty cute goat and uh, we asked our line producer like, where did you get the goat? And uh, he's like, ah, mila me go. No, where did you get a goat randomly? Mere building ke niche kasai hai. And <laughs> we bought the goat. We bought the goat, we set it free. That's what my line producer says to me. <laughs> and uh, we were really scared that, oh God, people are going to react in a very unfavorable way because uh, the idea was because they say that when you have the goat, you have to treat it like a pet during, uh, 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 during Bakra Eid. And you know, you have to take care of it. You have to treat it like your own. And that's where it kind of came to me like, oh, what about I write a song about a pet because you're literally letting the pet go and you can't help it. So that was kind of the thought process in getting this song together. And uh, uh, that's where the flip happens, where you actually realize that, oh, this goat is you and you can't do anything about it, but you still love it because that's the, I, I don't know, it kind of sounded hypocr uh, hypocritical to me. And uh, it kind of, ended with a bang. Uh, that was my PowerPoint way of showing a guillotine. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this song kind of did that and uh, we uh, ended up achieving something that was really dark uh, and stupid at the same time because it's obvious it's right in our face and nobody really bothered addressing this. And uh, sometimes it's about taking care of the obvious moments. Like it's there, right in front of you. You don't have to go too far to find something to write about. It could be right in front of you, it could be staring right like right at you and you don't bother, you know. And that's where you once you make the connection, it becomes funny or relatable or whatever. But those are my songs. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me here. I've really been so happy and right now and if you're other uh, uh, unless you want me to be done then you can just give me a like clap some more and I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys are an incredible audience. Uh, good night. Good day. Oh, that's comedian.